What's growing on? So week three, day eight, look what we have showing up. Cabbage palms, bamboo, royal palms, all the exciting stuff. So we're gonna start to get some things in the ground today. And this is where it starts to get fun for me and you. that windbreak going in. Look at the size of these beauties. Woo! Hey, got bamboo? All right, I gotta get to work. I gotta get on my uh, my gill over here. It's got a tree boom on the front. That's how we're getting those cabbage palms off. And we're gonna start laying some plants out. Hold tight. It's just after lunchtime. Got all these cabbage palms here behind me. Um, got a bunch of beautiful bamboos. I'm about to take you over and show you the bamboo wall we just put in. I think I got a little dust on me here today. Um, you can see over here on the back side of the palm, you see those big black balls. Those are 25 gallon root ball old hammy eye bamboos. So that's an actually a, a delicious edible shoot variety, the old hammy eye. Gets to be about 45 foot tall. That's gonna be here in the center region of the property and it's gonna act as that wind ramp you know, aesthetic break, kind of break up the landscape a little bit. And we'll walk you back over here to this wood line and show you what we've been installing this morning. Getting ready to start putting some mulch over here on this visual break over here on the east side of the property. And what we've done is we've pretty much planted all of these bamboos about 80% of the way in the ground. And I've just come through with about a probably quarter to a half a wheelbarrow for each individual bamboo. So they've, you know, they've got a, a really nice top dress of uh, worm casting biochar. Ooh, I almost tripped. Um, and then I came through with some of that sustain and we've got some fertilizer on it. So hold tight, let me show you this bad boy. All right, so looking down this way, you can see all the way through the water, way down there. This is the existing break that was already installed. So the grove is over there from phase one. That's south. And as I turn here, you're gonna be looking all the way up to the north. So this break that we've put in, these were 15 gallon, um, you know, <laughs> planted about eight foot on center. So this is graceful bamboo, a really, you know, gorgeous variety. It gets really clean canes on the bottom, about a 35 foot, 30 foot clumper. We've tried to plant it as far away from the power line as we can here. And like I said, you can see all of these are planted a little bit up out of the ground. So. You know, we've top dressed these with biochar, fertilizer, and we're just starting to get that irrigation line set in place. And, you know, something we did prior, because my bucket and because this is too tight, we put mulch all the way along the fence. So that's going to cover, you know, 50 to 60% of those bamboos already got the mulch sitting in place to just be pulled in. And you can see the guys are just getting some of that compost feathered out. And we'll be pulling that mulch onto the bamboos here shortly. And we'll be kicking on the irrigation. And most of them were all water packed actually as we installed them. But I mean, this is kind of a instant wall here. It won't be long and you know, these bamboo will actually be touching each other and you won't even be able to see through this. And you can see it's gone almost all the way up to that service gate. Not quite as much coverage as we were hoping for. I kind of wanted to get up here to this mango, but we'll show you where we stopped. So this is the tie-in we teed across over here with that blue line so you see it running all the way down the front and he's gonna be tying in those maxi jet stakes here in a second so here comes some of that hardwood goodness and we we're kind of hoping that break would have went right here to this mango behind us but we're two panels shy so we might have to pick up a couple more bamboo but you can see instant break instant filler as you can see I'm gonna need to get myself a GoPro but they're ready for some mulch over here on the front side. So I'm gonna jump back on my loader. I've already got it sitting over here by the pile, filled up with the bucket. I'm gonna start putting some mulch along the front for them. And that's why all they have to do is spread that. And we're on to planting some bamboo in the pond. So the next two or three days, we're gonna get a lot of uh, exciting things going on here because you know, you're gonna be able to tell that we've actually done a lot. And it was kind of hard to tell, you know, in those first two weeks of prep, you know, the work, the stuff that nobody wants to do, you know, getting the invasives out, pulling the weeds. I mean, that's that's not fun. Um, but, you know, if you're here for that part, you know, this is, this is gonna be fun too, starting to get some of this mulch out. So, plants in the ground, we're not playing around. What up? 
so it is five o'clock, the end of day eight, and I wanna show y'all what we've gotten done. So, you know that berm that we put in up here, all the way at the entrance, we ended up planting some Simpson stopper and some mealy grass on the top of that. So it now has that as a top species and has the dune sunflower on the side. So that'll be kind of growing up onto the bank. We got that big windbreak in, which was 33 15 gallon pieces of graceful bamboo. And we got nine 25 gallon old hammy eyes in, which are kind of really impactful. And I'll show you those. Those are all over here on the back side of the pond. And what an impact those made. These pots you see sitting here on the ground, these are actually red cedars. So these are a, um, you know, typically a native species that you will find, you know, by a pond. And that's usually that species that comes after you see the cypress. So we'll have cypress down by the edge of the pond, two on this end, three on this end. We've got the red cedars at the top. This is gonna have some green saw palmettos and some mealy grass kind of mixed in. In the back side, we have that old hammy eye, which is a 45 foot, you know, edible shoot clumper um, that'll have silver saw palmettos and cord grass behind it. So lots of native species going in, lots of pond plants going into the space over here. I wanna show you this little pond because this is the last time you're gonna see it looking so ugly. Um, you can see those 25 gallons, we space these pretty tight together. You know, so we've gotten that instant wall effect. Hey, Mr. Ryan, what's up, dude? So this is that space I was talking about where we're gonna be planting some silver saw palmettos, some cord grass, um, another cabbage palm. We have one more cedar over here on the corner. And I'll show you the other pond that we've started to plant out. And actually on the way there, um, Team Jubilee itself is out here actually harvesting the rest of those sweet potatoes. So I'm sure you guys remember when I came out and I was talking to Q. Well, now we don't just have Q, we've got Q, we've got two of the kids that live here. Um, we have the other caretaker, Gerardo. What's up, dude? What's your name? Finley. Finley, I've seen you before. Yeah. You live here and stuff, don't you? Yeah. Lucky man, lucky man. Gerardo, what do you got, man? A caterpillar. Whoa. Was he in our sweet potato patch? Yeah. Yep. Whoa. What are you doing, dude? Trying to find some potatoes. How's that working out? Is this like digging for gold? Yeah. What's your name? Tristan. Whoa, 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 whoa. Tristan, you, you like have a YouTube channel, don't you? Yeah. What's the name of that channel, dude? Uh, T-Dog Vlogs. T-Dog Vlogs? Cool. So you're going to start vlogging out here around the farm? Yeah. You know that's how you're going to get subscribers, right? You gotta start talking about these plants, dude. Whoa. Look at you guys, you're just rolling this thing up, huh? Yep. I see the center's pushed the farthest. Does that mean Gerardo's pushing the hardest? <laughs> yeah, probably. Q, what are you doing? You spot checking before they get there? No, uh, I'm cutting off the line right here so we can take this piece because it's getting too heavy to roll. Okay. So we're gonna restart the roll right here. Whoa. You guys ever in the car carpet laying business or anything, yeah, or, right. or what? That's pretty much what it feels like. Some healthy looking soil. No irrigation here either, right? Uh, no irrigation. We only put the compost tea here a couple times. And this whole field right here was pretty much powder sand. This was sugar sand prior. Sugar sand. Wow. And uh, we just buried it with like three feet of mulch and then threw the slips in the ground. Nice. So, so you're just recovering over here on this side? Yeah, we just put fresh mulch down right Cool. Covered up all that exposed mycelium and dirt. Hey, wait, I just saw you over here the other day. Yeah. You were just like right here. Yeah. Now you're over here. So that's that potato patch and you can see, look at this harvest. I'm right over here by this other small pond. That's what I wanted to bring you guys over and show you because we've actually started to plant some of these native species just up on this side. So you can see just here behind me, I had some of those red cedars and they're right over here in this area, right? kind of coming up to the edge. I'm not gonna go any further because I don't wanna shade anything over there as far as their sweet potato production goes. But here's the other pond that we're putting some love into. We've planted a couple of clumps of the old hammy eye here. And this is gonna get two big 25 gallon sea grapes in between to kind of fill that void. So you can see we're starting to dent into our, uh, our native species, get some of this stuff planted out. As this goes down, it's one step closer we are to getting out of here and getting home. Oh hey, what do you guys got here? The truck cart? 
Whoa, is this the Hauling cord grass? Cord grass, yeah. Hauling some cord grass, all right. Look at these olives. Y'all got to see these olives. I absolutely geek out over olives. I find these to be like one of the most ornamental, gorgeous front door, I mean, door yard trees. Look at these things. See these things? Unbelievable. I posted a video on my Instagram the other day of 120 year old olive trees that were $15,000 a piece. This one probably has the most beautiful shape. You can see it really has a gorgeous open canopy. Um, but these are, I mean, these are all really nice standards. So beautiful trees. I picked up some more uh, native stuff here this afternoon. We've got some uh, weeping Yapoon hollies. I've got some 15 gallon Simpson stoppers. I've got some uh, 25 gallon oaks. So we've got some more things that are kind of getting mixed throughout that food forest area over there. But that's it for today. Just wanted to show you guys what we got accomplished. I hope you're enjoying this project as much as I am. I guess you can tell I love my job. So don't forget, like, subscribe, comment, and I'm gonna point something out. You know, unlike a lot of other YouTubers out there, I really do try my best to reply to comments and you guys will see that. There's times I miss videos, don't get me wrong, I'm not perfect, but I do everything in my power to try to comment back to y'all's comments, answer your questions. I try to be on top of that. I actually look forward to that in the evening. So if I didn't get back to you, don't take it personal. I do try my hardest to get back to you guys. Highly appreciate y'all, so don't forget, you know, share this thing. Help me, help me get this channel out there. Help me get some more subscribers. Let's, you know, let's change the world, guys. I can only do it with y'all. So, like, subscribe. Sharing is caring. Pound dirt.